This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. The days of boring training methods are over. Meaningful impact shows up as high engagement, which translates to optimal performance. Your team deserves to feel entertained and empowered to keep your organization secure. Fill out the form at go.acilearning.com slash twit for information on a free two-week trial for your team. I, I got to ask you, did you mm -hmm. read this Google Project IDX announcement? Yes. Are you privy to Okay. Absolutely. So I, I have a number of things I got to get to with this topic that I, I just blows my mind. But I, as I do so often throughout the day, I saw the story, I control tab, you know, control clicked it over to a different tab to look at it later. Right. And I thought what this was going to be was yet another Google development environment, which you could argue it is, by the way, because mm -hmm. um, they have so many. I, it, 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 my, they make Microsoft look like they have a strategy. And they have a small number of things for developers and, and Google is just like, they're all over the map. Yep. And uh, if you want to make Android mm -hmm. apps, I think there's like 18 different ways you can do it. This one so, seems to have a little more gravity. Yeah, no, what, yes, it does. And, and we're definitely going to get to this, but I also kind of read through it quickly. Uh, right, and I, it's built on this thing. It does this. It, there's no pictures of it. There's no way to know what this thing is. And I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. But then I actually went back and looked at it and I and clicked on the link where it said it's built on something called Code OSS. Right. Uh, which is Visual Studio what? Code. You're kidding. Um, sorry. But Code OSS is what Visual Studio Code is called. Yeah, it's entirely, the open source but, version of it. Is well, it's all open source. It's all open source. But yeah. I, well, no, I, I no. There's Microsoft extensions that Oh, okay. uh, that are not. The product, sorry, code, they're not. The product itself. Code itself isn't. But right. So, uh, but the thing is, I listen. I keep waiting for this wonderful naive moment that I believe can happen with these two companies. <laughs> just get together oh. and start. You know, and not just, right now, friend. Here's, not after here's the a little poke there's bing game. game. I didn't realize it was Code OSS. <gasps> yeah. It's this is Visual Studio Code is what this thing is. Yeah. So now it gets more interesting. So from my perspective, well, you can do that yourself. I don't it's easy to run Visual Studio Code as a server. Yeah. Okay. But I I don't understand not calling that out explicitly. Thanks to our friends at Microsoft for all the hard work they've created. The greatest editor in the world. We've been trying to get past this IntelliJ <laughs> piece of crap we've been using forever for Android Studio. Thank you. We're gonna do what you're doing. With your own things and moving past the legacy code base. Love it. They wow. could have done that and they didn't. Mm -hmm. And I hate that. So, okay. That's yeah, me. I mean, it idea. literally is the name. It's uh, arguably it's a more accurate name, Code yeah. OSS, than yeah, Visual right. Studio. Well, Visual Studio Code is an implementation of Code OSS. That's, that's right. It's Project Chromium Chrome. You with your facts. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Well, it's okay. like Chromium Chrome, right? Yeah. The Chromium it project. Is. If you said Edge is using Chrome, you'd be making the same mistake. Yeah, and I, that's right. Because yeah. Edge is using Chrome. People do say that. Okay. Yeah. So, all right, fine. Anyway, this th this thing is going to be a web-based implementation of a yeah. developer environment, which is itself very interesting. The rationale being that you'll always be able to get to your projects and write code no matter what device you're on, no matter where you're on the world. And I, okay, I like that. Yeah, that mm -hmm. sounds good. This is going after DevBox. This is, I would argue, when I, when I first saw Project IDX, it's like, wow, Microsoft just punched Google where it lives in search. And so <laughs> Google is now punching Microsoft oh, where they live in Dev. Oh. It's like the one open source thing they're doing that everybody loves. But Google loves. has yeah. always had the code engine. Google's always had CoLab. Oh, yeah. There have always yeah. been cloud-based development tools. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But here, but, but here's, this is, this, but this is me, this is conspiracy theory for me now, because you can, you're going to be able to import GitHub projects into it. Good. It's going to support popular frameworks, like frameworks, like Angular, Flutter, Flutter, interesting. Next.js. So, so let me do, sorry. All of these are JavaScript except for Flutter. Right. Okay. So right, Flutter's a dark. Go, goes in there too, though. See, so go. Yeah. It will be. Um, by the uh, way, Angular JavaScript. is written in TypeScript. Mm, okay. Another um, Microsoft It's going to support. Product. Mm -hmm. JavaScript and Dart only at the beginning. And yes, Python, Go, and other languages uh, in the future. Okay, fine. Um, it is going to support a built-in web view for web apps and solutions. It's going to have a fully configured Android emulator and an embedded iOS simulator mm -hmm. all directly from the browser. Mm -hmm. So this, now now I'm thinking, okay, hold on a second. Talking this, about cross-platform. Thank yeah. you. Web and mobile, full stack. Okay, interesting. Tim Sneath, right? Former Microsoft yep. executive. Yes. Left Google. About two months ago, he was previously mm -hmm. in charge of Flutter. Yep. And I was like, why would why why would he leave? And I'm thinking now, because again, conspiracy theory, I think this might have had something to do with it. I, I, think, I don't think you're wrong. And I think it's because they decided this is more important than Sneeze's little corner. 
And yeah, so I think this it's been hijacked subsume. by more yeah, senior exactly. Folks. I think that's, I mean, I'm just guessing because I don't know anything yeah. about inside of Google, but I will say Google is a company, like if you wanted to write Android apps, you have the native Android stuff, you've got the Jetpack mm -hmm. stuff, you've got all these, you know, Kotlin and uh, they advance all the stuff. And then there's, there's Flutter for cross-platform and, and it supports desktop and web now. It, it's well, its own thing. Sort of. It, try, it was trying to. Flutter it's comes from iOS, Android, write yep. once, run both. Yep. Last year, in 22, we did a show with Chris Sells, who was also working mm -hmm. on Flutter at the time, yep. about, okay, about okay now we're expanding yep. into Windows yep. and Mac OS. That's cool. And I really, to me, IDX looks like the rethink of, I think so okay, too. exactly. We need a bigger cross platform yep. play. And I don't know that there was room. I don't that Tim got the role he would want in the reorg. So he right. moved on. That's right. I think so too. I'm just guessing by the way, but I think you're right. Yeah. And I, I, but I also, I just from a high level and I've kind of followed this stuff. I'm not as uh, intimately involved with it maybe as I, well, I'm not even. In, intimately involved in Microsoft side, but I know I know less about the Google stuff. But it just seems like they have a lot of co like things that do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. creating this this environment kind of makes sense to me. It's going to be integrated with AI, right? So uh, this Leo is their Cody. version. Of, this is their version of Copilot, right? Is Cody exact yeah. of of That's GitHub right. Copilot? GitHub Copilot. That's right. Yeah. And the Palm Two models uh, that yeah. today uh, power is a strong word. Uh, Studio Bot, I don't believe, is actually out in a non preview form, but it is in Visual Studio. If you have one of the advanced previews, I believe, and Duet, which is part of Google Cloud, it's going to run on Linux VMs in Google Cloud. Um, it. It has the basics today. It doesn't have advanced AI, but code completion, assistive uh, chatbot, contextual code actions, et cetera. I, oh, and integration Firebase uh, for hosting, which is Firebase, another Google service, set of services, actually a big set of services for app developers, mobile app developers, typically. Isn't that the so big play here is to get your app on Firebase? And uh, I think the big play and here GCP. is... And GCP. It's, yeah. li it's literally... Uh, it, it is to uh, Google what the Azure chat GTP stuff, I, I'm sorry, GitHub Copilot stuff is to Microsoft. It, it's, we have these things. Let's, let's give developers a way to do everything on yeah. us. Use all of our stuff. And by the way, this is what Oracle should be doing with Java. If you want to rake a cloud, because this it ties right. into all the things that matter, right? A unified client experience because we're living in a heterogeneous client world. Yeah. A diversity of languages because we live in a diversity of languages. Right. And But in the end, feeding back in services that make those high profit margins that all of them are chasing after. Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, Oracle would have to admit that the cloud is real first. Yeah, well, um, they definitely have a cloud. It just looks like a database. It's yeah. weird that way, but <laughs> right. you know. Um, yes. And, and I also, you know, we, we, because Richard and I kind of, well, Rich is in this world literally, and I'm super interested in, it, and this is the type of stuff we talk about. We've talked a lot over the past couple of months about this kind of, I don't want to call it a chasm or a schism or what, or what do you call it? Or a, a schism, a, a, a schism. Thank you. Between a uh, visual studio and full and visual studio code. Oh. But there is this interesting worldview change that occurs with visual studio code which I think Google is seeing and, is, and this is attractive to their developer base. Mm -hmm. A lot of whom are using visual studio code. I don't know what the numbers are. Maybe they do, but flutter, you know, your choices with flutter are basically Android studio mm -hmm. or visual studio code. Let me tell you right. which one is the much bigger, you know, pile of junk than the other is that Android Studio thing. And so this is... The usual meme when you talk about Android Studio is the picture of the F-16 jet engine being tested in full afterburner. It's like, right. look, I just started Android Studio. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, the lights in my house dimmed. And yeah. uh, and all yeah, the fans it, in my machine cranked up to full bore. Yeah, it's a piece of junk. And um, I, I I I welcome this change. Like, I, this yeah. is... To me, this is very interesting. I, I just wish... You know, Microsoft made such a big point with the Chromium-based Edge about how they about what they were doing. And I right. wish these two, uh, it's, it's all coming from the Google side, but I wish these guys could get their acts together and just say, look, Microsoft is an important partner. It's not 20 years ago. We don't fear them in every way imaginable, but I do think the timing stuff, because I think. But they did just thing. punch you in the nads. So maybe you're a little growly. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Well, I mean, the, the, the promise of, so, I mean, it's all if, well I was a, if I was a Google guy, search. <laughs> if I was a Google guy, I would turn this on its head because when Microsoft came out with the Chromium based edge, I, I sort of said it, the notion of a version of Chrome that is stripped of all the Google crap 
yeah. is uh, so appealing to me. And now on the developer side, micro, Google or some Google guy could make the case that the notion of a vi version of Visual Studio Code that is loaded up with all the Google crap is <laughs> of huge, you know, importance to me. Like I, you could almost make that case because yeah. I think there is an audience for this. And without, a, and without a doubt. And it's fun to talk on the subtext of all of this, you yeah. know, regardless of how they talk about it on, on the surface. Right. And in the end, it makes the products better. But and I'm also going to, you know, fight the characterization of the IDE versus the compose your own stack mindset, because there's advantages to both. Right. IDEs are older because before the IDE, we composed our own dev stack. Then we thought, you know, it'd be nice not wasting your time having to pull all these tools yeah. together. Let's put them into a package. Yeah. And that was Visual Studio and Eclipse and IntelliJ and so forth. IntelliJ yeah. being the youngest of the bunch, which is why it's still new and shiny and people like it. The older a product, every piece of software <laughs> with every version, I mean, collects a little more plaque on their arteries. And it's, it's hard to get in angioplasty if, for if software. The tagline is, it's better than Eclipse. <laughs> I mean, it kind of. Kind of a low bar. There. But again, you know, we mock all the IDEs because generations of developers worked on them and there are consequences to that. That's a right. lot of fatty food in the ecosystem of that software. Yep. And a, the push on on all these IDEs is lighten up, get more efficient. You know, the, the challenge that the studio guys have, because we've interviewed them on this, is there are layers of calm. There are layers of WPF, like it's hard to leave the old frameworks behind right. and modernize everything yeah, when the, all the customer sees is stuff that used to work breaks or it just is the same. I, the, I, from the Microsoft point of view, the beauty of Visual Studio Code is that for the people who aren't stuck in that legacy crap, they, they have this more modern, fast, yeah, and, modular, and, wonderful editor, you know, except that it's an editor. And actually yeah. what I needed was a project management tool and a debugger and, uh, you it's, know, code management. I mean, all, uh, all of the other things that I otherwise have to pull together myself. Right. Now I'm, I mean, I'm an old developer. I've done it both ways. I do it both ways. You know, I, whatever tool makes you happy, right? I'd rather build a web, so, uh, a, a, manage a website in Azure against studio than I would against code. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I, for me, I, I don't, I mean, thing I like about it is, yeah, you, you have to build it. You, you build, you pick your extensions, yeah. you pick the stuff you put in it. Well, they, but you know, the, you, the, the corollary to that is that, that means that studio is the nicest way to train a new developer. Like that's weird to me because it's not what anybody thinks, but the reality studio is beeps when it backs up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but at the same thing, time, it big. has all the pieces in you. Like the, yeah. the problem here is if I'm trying to get somebody new productive and, and being excited about development, Right. Studio is the sh is actually a shorter time to Hello World than Code. Uh, I know, but I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I know. I don't. I know you don't want it to be true. It just happens. No, no, true. I agree with it. It's just um, I, I, what I'm thinking. I resisted Visual Studio Code for so many years because mm -hmm. I that Visual Studio was my background. It's you know, it's uh, I, I watched the transition from Visual Basic to Vegas to having one, you know, a bunch of editors in one environment and then one editor. And I, it, to me, it made sense. And, yeah. uh, in visual studio code was like, I don't understand this. You're, you're no. working in a folder, you know, yeah. but actually, uh, there are efficiencies to that as well. Oh, and no. it's very, he, um, there's nothing dumber than needing to edit a JSON file and visual studio starts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's dumb. That. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you missed the, but, semi you missed the but, curly brace. Oh, but you visual, know. but Hey, I have a project that I'm working on and it isn't a file in a folder. It's a bunch of stuff. And yes. Studio right, is well, a project management tool. Listen, I, this is, oh God, this is, I'm, uh, this I'm pretty is sure just we're like in violent debate. agreement. Yeah, no, I think so too. It, it, there's a, there's an argument in the devices space about whether you can take something complicated like Windows, it's been around for a long time and make it simpler and mm -hmm. make it run on smaller hardware. Or is it better to take something that's, I know it's not completely, you know, clean room new, but, iOS or something simple, simple, only for phones, evolved yep. over many years. And then they start pushing it up to things like iPads and to things that are like computers and which of those approaches is better. And the truth is, is it pros and cons, or pros and cons to each? And sure. But the, but the modern approach, even though I don't like it in devices and I do now like it in the developer stuff is honestly this smaller, lighter um, thing that you can add on the things you need only when you need them. 
and the people that don't have this smaller lighter and thing. You're you just coming described at it from an experience Emacs. perspective. <laughs> yeah. I knew you'd get yeah. to Emacs eventually. <laughs> well, I mean, I've gone in and out of Emacs. Is the, the I love here. Emacs. Yeah. Everything but, you, know, you but, described but, can be turned like, on in Emacs. That's the beauty of you can even Visual run Studio Emacs Code across the server. Came up out of a out of a kind of a sublime model. It's mm -hmm. like this. It, mm -hmm. the, it was it, Emacs is Adam um, uh, the sublime. Extent, and VS Code yeah. were all the, the same. The extensibility era. of Emacs yeah. is kind of based on like a network age. And I think the extensibility of those code editors, and I would say today's Visual Studio Code really, is LSP. The, it's this the, new the thing. Modern, yeah. The modern word. Yeah, the modern yeah. world. Yeah. That's all. You can even use LSP in Emacs. There's, there's an LSP Emacs. No, I'm not. I mean, I'm not surprised. <laughs> it, it's obviously Emacs, traditional Emacs is very heavily. Um, you know, shortcuts and it's tuned codes for coders. And, you know, I mean, it really and, is. It's yeah. tu completely tuned for coding, and yeah. uh, and it's very elegant. But hey, the listen, learning curve is ridiculous. Th there is yeah. nothing that creates words that I have not tried to use to write right. <laughs> with. You know, right? You, I mean, I've looked into legitimately everything. have to spend probably three to five years before Emacs is even slightly comfortable. Yeah, and it's taken yeah. me about ten years before I feel like, oh yeah, that's my go-to. Yeah, it's hard in this, you know, in in this. <laughs> it's a weird thing to say in this kind of era of um, GUIs, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. To go back to that kind of a tool, but, but coding is essentially kind of a, a textual today. thing, right? True. And that's the yeah, that's true. the point. Is what do you have a GUI for when you want to keep your hand on the keyboard, <laughs> right? This it's, is. Um, I go to a gym three, four, four times a week, I would say, and uh, there's a parking lot up back, as there would be. And not every day, but every other day at least, there's a guy parked in the yellow stripe line thing near the door. That's not a spot. And it's like you you're going to the gym. Well, you you <laughs> walk, can't walk a little 10 bit extra feet from an actual <laughs> spot. And uh, you know, and that, it, that's kind of the same mentality. It's like you're learning to code. You, sh you should you spend need a little know. time. Yeah, you need to spend some time at the command line. Um, I feel that people yeah. should be you know you should start about in fifth grade using Emacs, and by the time you're an adult, you will be so. You'll comfortable. probably have it figured out. Proficient. What's well, the, the, um, the real so pushback to the command line was repeatability, right? Yeah. I mean, the real the the danger of the GUI was you ended up having to make a word doc saying click here, right? And what right. you really wanted right. was, and then you had to print it out because you can't right. access it when yeah. you're using Emacs. You, you can want script the mouse, code. but it's not easy or fun. Yeah, and yeah. it's and it's not what you want. And no. so, I mean, the good news is Studio has grown up enough now that it's spitting the scripts out for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>